Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and now we are back into pick in bands. Um, <laughs> Swain Bandway, what are we really going to see any changes in, uh, in the picks and bands? I don't think there's really going to be too much changes. It's kind of been shown that uh, both teams are pretty okay with how the draft goes. Both mm -hmm. sides won't swap sides either, so I don't see too much changes. Although Trundle was banned earlier this time, so they might be thinking of changing up the last ban. Yeah, um, and <laughs> it's been, uh, yeah, well, so far UT Dallas's bans are the same as well as George Mason's bans. And the Although final they just banned ban... the Skarner, so that's going to be off oh, wait. the table this time. You are right, Skarner is a different ban. Uh, Firefly was honestly incredibly effective on Skarner. He, he always knew what he had to be doing, where he had to be going, and he was able to do that exceptionally well. Uh, yeah, and the Olaf they... ban in return. Yeah, they banned the Olaf this time. So both junglers are going to have to swap it up this game. So we'll be able, we'll have to see on whether or not it was just the Skarner that was really good in the early game by Firefly, or if he's got some other picks that will allow him to just carry the early game and into the mid game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see Willwin on Morgana. We got to see, or excuse me, not Willwin. Keen is going to be playing Morgana this game. He played it in game one, and he was pretty effective. Um, so it'll it'll be good to see him back on that comfort pick. Although this means that Caitlyn is going to be traded over and uh, because of the Morgana pick. So mm -hmm. the Caitlyn, I think, is also really effective in this uh, series. Yeah, especially with the Karma support, uh, as resident sleepers that might be, <laughs> Caitlyn Karma. But uh, it, that is a good lane, uh, I think. And but Kaisa means, and Morgana! Kaisa. Dude, yeah. I'm excited to see Kaisa in action. I really wonder what build she's going to go. She's going to go the Death Dance build or more of the Crit build. I really think the Death Dance build is the most effective one. And, it, and Death Dance is also kind of just a broken item in my opinion. Yeah, I uh, I definitely <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then Victor is going to be locked in as well, so we are getting pretty significant changes from both team uh, in their pick ba in bands. Um, yeah, oh I boy, guess... I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I do think the Victor will give them some good wave clear that will really just allow them to just farm it out if it really starts to go or the game starts to get away from them. Mm hmm. I, I agree with that. Zed banned away. I think that's just a comfort pick banned away from X case. Yeah, Zed really hasn't seen meta in a long time, so I'm kind of surprised <laughs> by the ban uh, in terms of meta picks. But X case is it's got to be just because X case is good on Zed. I won't be denied. Uh, well, he did get a buff in eight point seven. So, I guess it kind of makes sense that we're going to see him being picked here. Um, but, I, I don't know. I guess if Oriana isn't banned away, then I guess we're probably going to see XK's picking up Oriana again. Although yeah, I'm, you see that. Yeah, I'm not sure how effective the Oriana would have been, though. He started missing a lot of shockwaves in the later stages of the game, which kind of uh, made the teammates, for, the team fights for sure. Uh, a loss, really, if the Oriana's not hitting any ult, anyone with the ult. Yeah, which was kind of a problem last game. X Case did whiffle a couple of uh, key ults. Yeah. yeah, so and we're gonna see the J4 ban, so it's really going to uh, stop some of the engage in the jungle. Shen being hovered for Ion. I can get behind Shen. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, the Shen ult will allow him to have a lot of side pressure, and Shen's actually uh, quite the fighter, especially for his tanks. So, he'll be able to hold his own against Orn. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the Rise locked in for X case, which I think his Rise is pretty clean in game one. Um, however, yeah, I definitely prefer his Rise over his Ori. Yeah, uh, so I guess it's not really that bad that his Oriana was taken away from him. Um, and here, let's see what Keen is going to lock in to round out the team comp. I, I wonder if it's going to be uh, it's going to be Jungle Camille most likely. I doubt they'd put Orn in the jungle. Mm-hmm. But I was uh, thinking Nocturne could have been a potential pick with a Shenel. Oh, Camille locked in for uh for Will Win. We saw his Camille earlier, and then the Jax locked in for Firefly. That's exciting. I'm a huge fan of seeing Jax played. Uh, whenever I get, or whenever anybody can play him. Wait. Wait, 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 That's Camille Jungle. Yeah, that's definitely Camille Jungle. Um, I, I'm Camille, not sure how I feel about that. Camille Jungle's been popping up, um, quite recently with just her E being able to help with the ganks, because it's just from so far range, mm-hmm. as well as she brings good damage into ganks. It has a pretty good clear. The ult's really good in, especially the solo lanes. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, if you're able to get your ultimate in an effective position, the enemy isn't able to retreat under their own tower, then really, they're screwed. They're not going to be able to get out and they're going to die. Uh, and I think that's that does make Camille an effective jungler. Um, yeah, but on and- the same side, Jax also brings quite a bit to... Ganks mm-hmm. with his stun and damage as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Jax is a late game powerhouse. So really, once you get to late game, you have the Jax and the Caitliner who are going to be able to lay down so much damage. Um, and I'm actually a pretty big fan of the CC chain on the side of uh, George Mason. Because you have the Shen, he goes in. The Jax follows up with the E. Uh, and then the victor can use uh, his ultimate slash, I believe it's his W, in order to knock everybody up and slow them. While Enrique yeah. is able to just lay down constant damage in the back. The, and the karma really to help everyone position better with the AoE shields mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely. Um, what's that? I do think that both teams do have a pretty good team fight though, but I definitely think that... Um, it's definitely easier to do a team fight with Jax, Shen, uh, than Camille, Orn. Just because mm-hmm. Camille's team fighting is, I think, less clear than Jax's. Yeah. Um, so, personally, I feel like George Mason has a better team composition in total. Um though I'm not too familiar with how Kaisa is able to fit into a team composition. Uh, I believe Kaisa is more similar to Vayne, and, well, Vayne being Vayne, has a pretty tough time fitting into team compositions. Um, the just range buff of... for Kaisa, though, really helps her team fight and lane much better. Kaisa mm-hmm. brings a lot of damage, which is similar to Vayne, but she uh, really has the ability to live when people get on top of her with Death Dance and her ult and the move speed from her E. So That is true. Mm-hmm. I do think that uh, she'll be able to be pretty uh, effective in these team fights, but it's really a, how much Caitlyn and Victor can kind of zone her away. Yeah, and as far as team fighting goes, uh, it really will be up to the Kaisa to be putting down the damage, because when you Look at the rest of the team or the rest of the John's teammates. You have an Orn, a Camille, and a Rise in a Morgana. None of those really have enough damage to really take on the rest of the enemy team. So the John's is going to have to be showing up huge in these team fights. Yeah. And th- the one bright side about the Kaisa pick is she has a lot of damage that comes from her kit that isn't just auto attack. So the Shen mm-hmm. won't entirely counter her with the auto attack nullification zone. Yeah, and same thing applies to Jax with his uh with his counter. So I I I, I agree with that. The Kaisa could really fit into the same composition better than I was previously thinking. Yeah, although 
she still does rely on the auto attacks as any AD carry does in order to really pop her passive off. Mm -hmm. So it'll really come down to execution on uh, whether or not Kaisa can live in these team fights, as well as how much damage Ryze can really do. I do think that they really have to uh, snowball with the Camille in order to get the win. Because I think as gold gets even in these team fights, it's just much easier to win when you have the nice front line of Shen and Jax to dive and Victor with the damage and Caitlyn mm -hmm. just sitting back there dealing damage. Yeah, and really that's why I was saying earlier that I I really do think that George Mason has a better team fighting composition just yeah, because I think, of CC chains. I think they scale much better. Mm -hmm. Although... Um, <laughs> so, although Orn with six items will definitely be able to help with the late game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when Orn gets tanky... It's really hard to take him out, um, just because he's so tanky. So the Caitlyn is really gonna have to. I really think that Caitlyn should be building um, Lord Dominic Schmargs regards, excuse me, in order to be taking out the Orn as well as uh, I think the Camille is gonna be building a fair bit of health as well. <clears throat> so that yeah. should be a very effective item. Um. Route was having some trouble loading in, so we're having a bit of a delay. But I believe now we are going to be on the Summoner's Rift, so welcome one, welcome all to Summoner's Rift, where we are getting into Game 3 between UT Dallas and George Mason. The real question will be is um, whether or not Faith will go for the invade again and if he'll get punished. Yeah. Um, I think... Well, I think without the more... Uh, immediately getting into game, you get a pause, uh, lag issues. So we're going to have a little more time just to talk about the game. Um, and so... Yeah, I definitely agree, though. But Alex is now playing Karma as opposed to Morgana. Um, so the level 1 cheese in that red buff bush might not be as effective. Although the ult uh, R does bring a lot of early damage, so... They might be able to just pop them fast enough, even though they don't have the CC. Mm -hmm. Um, and route disconnecting. Okay, so he's gonna try and get back in as fast as he can. Um, the uh, minion dematerializers on Rise, which we already had talked about when uh, X Ace was playing Rise previously. Really good, helps him clear waves faster to be able to roam to bottom lane more efficiently. But on Orn, that's kind of interesting. What do you think the thought process is behind taking Mini Dematerializer on Orn? Uh, I think a lot of it's for, uh, first of all, making sure you get the cannons with the buff. As well as, mm -hmm. um, you can potentially hold them on to uh, destroy the siege minions. Or the, uh, yeah, the siege minions and whatnot from when the inhib gets taken. So um, it's really to help with that split push with the Shen, I think. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure why you'd take Dematerializer other than that, though. Yeah, just to be able to keep up. That makes sense. Yeah, because Shen will likely go Titanic, and that'll bring a lot of wave clear. That That is true. Um, and <clears throat> so... Where do you think the jungle priority is going to be this game? This game, I think the Camille will probably be focusing on the bot side with uh, the Ryze and Morgana being able to bring a lot of CC into the fights. But of course, if Shen does step too far out of line, you can definitely still go top lane. But I do think it'll be a, more of a bot lane focus. Yeah, you have two very high damage junglers who are going to be uh, I really think that them playing around their lanes, the dominant lanes, will be the best thing. Because even if one of their lanes doesn't have a lot of damage, I mean, you still, either Camille or Ajax, and you have a lot of damage that you're able to supply on your own. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, and I do think it's a tank top lane. It 
it's not too big of a ish, like need to go up there and press the issue. It's like a carry into a tank yeah. type of lane that you kind of want to get the carry ahead. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, let's go over what happens. Jungler gets successful gank. You get a kill on the other enemy top laner. Well, cool. Now you have a little more gold, but I mean, the top laner is just gonna get you know more health. Yeah. So it's it's not gonna matter as much. A kill top lane isn't going to matter too much, except on, if the jungler gets it, because both of them are carries. So the tanks are really just going to just have a slightly bit more damage or take a little bit less damage. It's not really going to give kill threat. Whereas mm -hmm. if you get kills in the mid and bot lane, it'll really be able to help snowball uh, them and give them more kill threat in the lanes and be able to punish smaller things. And the play has now resumed. The items are being bought. The summoners are spawning onto the rift. And ladies and gentlemen, we are getting started with game three of UT Dallas versus George and Mason. Once again, my name is Sir Potato the Ninth, and I am joined here by your hook. And we are getting onto the rift. And it looks like there might be a potential invade, invade um, mm -hmm. with the Johns coming up top. Yeah. I think they're bringing Firefly. more firepower to this invade this time. He's dancing around up there. Although with the, sp the spread, I don't think they'll really be able to get too much. Yeah, uh, I think Firefly is doing an effective job. Will Win is walking up, kind of just showing his head. Firefly getting an auto attack off. Now X Case whacking away at root. <laughs> but it'll be pretty important to know which side the Jack starts on, because. You'll probably want to go for a gank around three minutes, and knowing which side that'll be on is pretty important. Oh, route getting chased away into the enemy jungle. The dark binding does not hit, but Alex's empowered Q will connect. Which, if she took uh, summoners uh, or the ultimate hat, that's uh, pretty nice being able to use it early. Just getting that extra cooldown on the ult. <laughs> no it game. looks like they're going to invade the red buff here. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this. Counter's being used. Gets two man stuns and now oh, the flash Firefly is being forced out by the Johns. Now Firefly going in. The heal is using first blood. Going over to Firefly. That was a really smart invade. There weren't any wards watching for it, and Firefly was able to get the buff, which really puts the Camille behind. She's going to have to solo this blue buff and he gets full reign of her bot jungle yeah this sets george mason so far ahead they get the summoner spells out of the kaisa they get the flash out of the morgana and they even get the red buff setting the uh, faith behind as well as giving first blood gold to firefly on Jax, who's able to carry a game single-handedly with a bit of gold and a lot of uh just paying attention to lanes that's so good for george mason yeah, and level 2 is so important bot lane that because of the Kai'Sa dying, she's not going to have that XP. Mm -hmm. And she's Short. getting zoned out of a lot of the CS too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Dorian's shield was bought by the Johns, but and I guess that'll help a little bit. Uh, just sustaining in lane. It's gonna be really tough though. You have this massive minion wave. Already a lot of tower pressure being applied by Enrique and Alex. Yeah, it's just showing how much Caitlyn can really uh, abuse a short range uh, AD carry. And Kaisa still falls under that tree even with the range buff. I think yeah. Caitlyn's definitely her hardest matchup and they picked into it. So they've really got to have um, a lot of faith in the Johns in his later game team fighting of Kaisa. Absolutely. But now we're back in a neutral state. Already 800 gold ahead is uh, <laughs> George Mason. And they're going to be looking just to extend that lead uh, just by pressuring off all of... Uh, Wait a second. Pressuring off all of UT. There, there it is. UT Dallas's team members off of CS. Uh, you're gonna see Firefly invading Faith early. Um, but now let's see. Keen like looking onto Alex to ignite you. And now the heal is being burned by Enrique. Flash out of Alex. 
Now Faith just gonna walk away. He gets the uh, flash out of the enemy support and he's satisfied. And that's really nice. They're able to even out the summoner spells on both sides from the ones that they lost from mm -hmm. the Kai'Sa dying early, which really allows them a little bit back into this lane. And the majority of the gold leads on the jacks from just being able to out farm the Camille and just take all of her camps in that first clear. Yeah, uh, and especially Camille jungle or jungler. Camille is not so great without any items. So once you start to deny her uh, CS and gold, she starts to just fall further and further behind. Yeah, she'll. She really needs to start getting the sheen and everything for the triforce. Oh, Keen spotting out Firefly, both of them getting CC by each other. Flashing away is Keen, but it does not matter. Firefly, with the gap closed, getting another kill. Firefly might just end up taking over this game if it keeps going his way. Just more kills on Jax is just worrisome if you're on the enemy team. Yeah. No, he already has uh, his tier 2 jungler item completed, as well as boots and a dagger? He's in a great spot right now. Uh, and it's going to be so tough for Faith to try and 1v1 him. Really, he can't. Faith can't yeah. do anything about Firefly. There's, if Firefly's in his jungle, they, his only choice is to... Oh, oh Firefly going in the bottom lane. Yeah, onto the Johns and Firefly getting another... This is nutty, but Route forced to flash out of case, X cases uh, mid lane. Uh, oh goodness, Firefly, three and zero with a uh, how much is that? Almost a, no, it is a thousand gold lead over Faith. Uh, and now Enrique and Alex are benefiting so much from this as well. Enrique has two assists, and he is three hundred gold ahead. And now in the middle lane, you have. Uh, Root getting taken out by Faith, but then, right immediately after, you got Will Win, who went a little too deep with the Sand United and ends up getting killed himself. Yeah. So. <laughs> Although the Shen getting a kill there is quite important because of the, him having to use the Shen ult there. It's really important for Shen to get something from his first ult. Because yeah. he really doesn't have the ability to use it in lane at all, so... It really affects his matchups if he's not getting something with it. Absolutely. Um, and now, you see Camille, or Faith on Camille right now, almost struggling to take the red buff. So yeah, I think a, that's, a, that's a good indication of how this game is going for him. Yeah, he's a full level behind and just so much gold behind that the Jacks can really just walk over him in the jungle. He has to give up all of his jungle if Jax is there and wants it and it looks like there could be a dive bot lane but it gets spotted out with the pink ward and the tri bush yeah this is such a tough game for ut dallas so far although there uh, looks like there's going to be in a collapse so firefly is actually in a dangerous position they're gonna lose the tower will is teleporting into a minion to try and stop some of the pressure call of the forge god not being used but now x is coming in too this is a bad spot George Mason, they're running away as fast as they can. And they actually ended up succeeding, getting out uh, five members of UT Dallas in the bottom lane, but nothing positive comes out of it. That's terrible. You lost the teleport from your Orn. You lost the ultimate from your Rise. That is not what you want to be seeing when you're so far behind. Yeah. On the bright side, it was at least a close call. So... Yeah. It really could have gone oh, a little bit. Oh no, Akeen getting, oh, he gets ignited and Alex gets the kill after the ignite goes through and now the Johns in a bad spot. Enrique laying down the damage is not the uh, trap. But now you see Faith coming in. The Johns is very far out, but Faith gets the kill onto Enrique. Now Firefly's coming in. Well, Teleport coming in from X case gets canceled immediately as Route saw that coming. Uh, so 1v1, one one, or 1 for 2 trade in favor of UT Dallas. And now Wait, you can no, really no, 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 zero for two trade. Nobody now died. you can really see the power of the Camille jungle pick and why it's actually pretty meta. She can come up and definitely clean up kills that you wouldn't normally be able to get in a lane. And mm -hmm. she just brings so much with the ability to bring CC from across the lane. Will Win is in a bad spot right now. He's getting whacked up by Ion. Get some health back, though. <clears throat> hmm. 
it's uh, it's pretty tough. I myself haven't had really great experiences with Camille Jungle in my solo queue games. Um, whenever that gets picked. However, it does seem to be working out uh, a little bit more, I guess, for Faith. He gets two kills, and now he's only 800 gold behind. So, yeah, oh no, but Faith, maybe gonna get caught out by Firefly. He cancel. Oh, he does not cancel the dash. Yeah, the Camille dash, if it hasn't touched the wall yet, can't be canceled. So, it was just a little bit unlucky timing with the Jax there when he was yeah. able to stun. But now, using the dash, finding Firefly, who then doesn't get the stun. Sandy Knight is coming through from my own, and we got a team by breaking Blade, flashing out, but Firefly still gets a kill because of the jungle items. Now, I own the top lane, taking out Will Win, two for zero across the map. George Mason getting some more kills and not having to trade anything. And now, Keen is getting engaged on by Alex, who does not have uh, the health in order to tank the John's damage and is forced to back off. Yeah, Will Wynn just went a little bit too deep trying to cancel that channel and paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. Now this tower is so is low. Not smart. This tower is gone. Yeah, the diving Shen never works out. <laughs> it's very, very tricky business. But now Enrique and Alex finally take the tier one bottom tower, and the Johns and Keen are forced into a bad spot. They're not too, too far behind, though. It's mostly just the assist gold that's on the Caitlyn that's giving him the lead in the bot lane. Yeah, and it's only... A, well, it's, it's a lead of 400 gold, which is still pretty significant, but... I mean, not as significant as a 1.2 thousand gold lead in the jungle in favor of Firefly. Speaking of, Firefly coming in looking for X-Case, who got stunned, knocked up, and ultimately taken out of the game. Route getting the kill, and now Keen is trying to set up the kill. Firefly goes across out, and now Will Win is coming in, getting Volcano Rupture. The teleport coming in from Ione. Now Route is solo on the middle. Oh, but now the John's coming in, getting the kill, but sacrificing his own life is going to be deleted rather quickly. Firefly picking up yet another kill and putting some more gold into his pocket. And now Keen, nice dark binding, but ultimately futile. Uh, and I believe this tower is going to go down. George Mason with a dominant march. Not I actually think gonna be just, the tower. Yeah, they're just going to go take the dragon. It's mm -hmm. probably just the safer play and just free. Although the Camille's there looking to potentially go for their steal. Mm -hmm. And they've there's a lane swap top bringing the Caitlyn to really push that tower down. Try to grow this gold lead that they've oh, already come on. We're gonna steal! Let's see it! Come on, Keen! The Jax has uh, to be real Oh, Firefly! Here. Yeah, actually getting stunned, knocked up. Not dead yet, the uh, Traveler's Refuge will save him, and Ion actually gets killed, and Firefly runs away with his life! Now Ion looking for- gets the taunt. The ultimate does go through from Keen, but it- Oh, what? He just oh, died King from gets the killed. Shen. Yeah. X-Case lives. Oh, a split second later, and X-Case would have saved Keen's life. Amazing that Firefly was able to escape that though. He was so low. But really, uh, it all came down to Ion using Spirit's Refuge and canceling all the auto attacks. That's really what saved him. Yeah, that was a really nice play from the both of them. Mm -hmm. And it looks like uh, the Kais is not swapping over, so there's a potential for mid lane to fall here with the Caitlyn there. And call oh, the Orch God. Orch God coming through. We're gonna get two members knocked up from Mason. And now Firefly coming through. Such a big threat. And UT Dallas knows this, and they have to back off. Meanwhile, Victor is just in the top lane, free farming and pushing into that tower of Fault Orn. Really not getting anything done in this mid lane. <laughs> He's just getting free damage. Use Call of the Forge God, but that was about it. Yeah. It did help to stop the mid pressure though, so. <laughs> on the bright side, they didn't lose mid turret. But on the dark side, they got a lot of pressure and damage applied to their top turret. Yeah, they pretty much lost at least a third of that turret and damage from just Victor being up there. Yeah. Which is not ideal, especially when you're already so far behind so early in the game. Uh, yeah. I guess 
George Mason just has to not throw this game like they did last games early. <laughs> yeah, and I think George Mason can really just force this mid turret down pretty soon here. Just bring in the jacks and Shen uh, has ult, so they can really potentially just dive this if anyone shows on the solo lanes or the side lanes. So what do you think UT Dallas has to do to get back into this game? Uh, just try to stem the bleeding, really. Hmm. They're giving up a lot of gold, so if they can stop giving over like gold over to Jax, who's becoming a monster at this point, he's getting really far into his Triforce now. And Camille's basically not even started it. So yeah, <laughs> they've if they can get a shutdown on Jax, I think that's the number one way of getting back into this game is catching out Firefly mm -hmm. from being potentially too greedy on with that gold lead. Yeah, but oh, uh, Faith is looking for routes. Uh, Sandy United comes through, and now Firefly by the old is coming through routes. Flash taunt is going to be connecting. That is going to be one dead. Camille now will win is trying to get out of there, but he does not succeed. Dominating! He's getting a lot of damage taken though. Now Keen running away from him under the tower. Firefly will not live. That's one shutdown. But now Ion and Reaver chasing Keen down away from his turret. He's forced to flash out, but it's not gonna be enough. Keen. So low, trying to escape, uses black shield, saves his life once, but Rout ultimately will take his life. So when I said catch out the checks, I didn't mean forfeit three people for it, but <laughs> <laughs> really, if you're going to be going for kills and whatnot, anything that's even is really good for you. Just getting some more gold in your pockets, but you have to try to avoid just losing a lot of people and with Shen, the collapse is so much faster. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you can just use Stand United, uh, you also have Teleport Shen. It's so really, anywhere there's an objective or a team fight. He's going to have some way of getting there. Yeah, but this at this point, it's all about whether or not the second tier turrets can really get cracked. The, those are much easier to defend than the outer ones, so... It'll really be up to uh, whether or not they make a mistake for anyone to really come back. Yep. And... Uh... Tough game so far for UTD, but last game, they were able to come back in a spectacular fashion for a bit before they ultimately got beaten again. Um, yeah, and this is a smaller gold lead than it was last game, although that's it's true. much earlier in the game, so yeah, the gold lead is uh, definitely more important to have uh, earlier. I agree, yeah, for sure. And Shen's down in the bot lane. His ult's going to be up relatively soon, so... I I think I would rather see him in the top lane. Uh, just because the dragon is 45 seconds out. Yeah, he, he's back. Yeah. The reason is, the dragon is 45 seconds out, and once a dragon fight breaks out, he's just going to be able to teleport uh, there. But if you send anybody else to the top lane to clear those waves, they don't have teleport. So if dragon fight breaks out, they're not gonna be able to be there as fast. But anyways, Call of Forge got being used, and now Alex in trying to stay alive, but the damage coming through from uh, from the Johns will win, end up getting killed. Uh, and now everybody's trying to get the damage down, and now Enrique and Root are both dead. X Case takes the kill credit for that one, and now Firefly runs away, succeeds, lives uh, a little bit longer, and I just realized I have been two seconds behind-ish. But anyways, now you have. Four members of UTD running towards this Infernal Dragon. Uh, it seems like they're going to be able to take this rather easily, but the Rift Herald in the mid lane does get used, and this could be calling, causing a lot of pressure. Going to be doing so much damage to that tower. And Keen, sorry to tell you this, pal, but you're Morgana. You're not going to be able to do enough to save that turret. Dear what? Yeah. Two turret gets taken down. And now I... the Rift Herald is still alive. Going to look for another one, but it's not going to be able to find it. I think that's oh, a. Oh, route disconnects. I definitely think that's a better trade to get the first tier 2 tower, because that really allows the map to be opened up to potentially dive the other lanes, which just gets getting them much easier. An Infernal Dragon is great, but if you can keep the enemy team from building items, it's not really going to do much. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
so they are pretty far behind in gold. I mean, the Infernal Dragon will help alleviate that damage a little bit, but even then, you're still 8,000 gold behind, so yeah, it's pretty I don't tough. Think, I don't think an Infernal Dragon's really going to even anything up. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just, Shen also is going to be able to give so much side lane pressure. He's 5-0, and oh, and Orange just 1-3. and three. Shen's nearly completed his second item and Orn hasn't even started it. So Five they can just oh. leave him on a side lane and just not really have to, to do anything and they're going to get free gold pretty much. How is Shen 5 and 0? Oh? <laughs> Who is letting this happen? He's Shen for God's sakes. Route disconnecting again. But he's Shen. Come on. He's not supposed to get t kills, he's supposed to stay there. He's supposed to get auto-attacked for 30 years before he finally dies. Ah, killing me. It's just, he's just been cleaning up kills just from the team fights and everything. So many people get low that it's just the Titanic and everything just helping him clean up kills. And honestly, it's not all that bad giving kills over to Shen. Of course, you always want kills on your carries, but Jax is fed, and Caitlyn's not too far uh, too far behind or anything, so... Yeah. Uh <laughs> Just fine giving him over. Route is and reconnected. So it looks like we're potentially going to get back into game pretty soon here. It's just the game of pauses. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh... I don't. I believe there's a rule uh, preventing teams from just pause stalling the entire game. Correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. But I don't uh, think that'll really be an issue or anything. I think. Yeah. Um. Okay. I think. So. Honestly, I think for coming back in this game, I think it's going to be really hard for them, just mm -hmm. from. Shen and Jax just being able to really do anything they want in this game. I think the way they have what they have to do to get back in this game is bring the Orn over before the Shen uh, can really get anything and try to force something to happen. Like they did mid lane with the Orn ult and the Camille ult really just trapping people in. I think that's what they really have to do to get in this game. Bring Orn over faster. Yeah, and if you can do that, then Orn is going to be able to assist in the team fight so much. He has so many useful uh, engage tools. Everything from knocking up your opponents to uh, making the CCs applied to them last longer. That Orn is really valuable in team fights. And if you're not utilizing him well enough, then he's you're just not going to be winning team fights. Yeah. And Baron's coming up in a minute, so. The Ornal will be really effective there, and if they can catch them uh, off guard or do any sort of fight that's in their favor, they'll be able to get Baron, and that'll really be able to help get the gold lead back. Because a lot of the gold lead is from the towers, which is just standing gold. With a Baron, they'll be able to equalize it really quickly. Because mm -hmm. they've been good on farming and everything, keeping gold even that that way, that way, and most of the gold's from towers, so yeah. I'll be able to keep it even if they're able to get Baron. Yeah, and uh... <laughs> such a long pause! Goodness! Come on, Route! <laughs> Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, everybody watching in the chat, I want to see some uh, Pog Champs, whatever team you think is going to win. Um, and we can, uh, we can just see who, which team has more spirit and who's cheering for their side more. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I think Route has a potato router. Um, I saw that. <laughs> Goodness. All right, well. 
20 minutes. I, 10 minutes for think... pause time. Um. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. All right, and so let's just take a little bit to talk about the teams. UT Dallas, uh, we'll just go through their record. Week one, they 2 0 Old Dominion. Um, really, they 2 0 they had a five-week record of 2 0 everybody they played against. They 2 0 Old Dominion, Florida International University, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina State. They finally got beat by Texas A&M. Um, but five straight weeks of 2 0 everybody, and in the playoffs, they 3 0 North Texas and they 3 0 uh, University or UT Austin. So they've really been dominating everybody that they've been playing against. Um, and or they've been winning in such impressive fashion, 2 0 almost everybody. Um, yeah, and we are once again back. The game has unpaused. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see if UT Dallas are able to keep their dream alive. So far, it's still one to one in the series. If they're able to come back and turn this game around in the series around, then they can continue their winning streak. But George Mason are not seeming too willing to let that happen. As right now, they have a 7,000 gold lead. They're going to try and finish this game as the winners. Yeah, and I do think that George Mason Although it looks uh, like they have a sure win, they there have been cases where uh, they could throw the gold lead, and just, honestly, just bad macro can easily throw games. Yeah, so if it doesn't playing matter, game could be a real issue. Oh, there he is. Route finally reconnected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but you're absolutely correct. It doesn't matter if your team has everybody has a skill of faker in game or in lane. If they're not able to play around global objectives and be positioning their team members, he left again. And positioning your members on the map well, then it doesn't matter how well your team is able to play, you're still going to end up losing. Yeah, and it's really unfortunate that Route can't connect cuz right now it's a 4v5, so yeah. Honestly, they, Dallas might just force Baron, and there's not too much that uh, they can do about it. Granted, I don't think Route is one of the <laughs> Route disconnecting isn't as bad as Firefly or I own disconnecting, um, because yeah. I mean, really, you still have two members who have 11 kills between them. They're going to be able to carry the game pretty much on their own. Regardless of if route is there or not. Yeah, it's just it makes playing out like macro just so much harder because you can't just force stuff as mm -hmm. easily without that fourth or without that fifth member. Yeah, although it's, uh... Shen's doing some work bot lane, he's really able to push out this Orn and force uh, force whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're. Trying to get vision around Baron so that they can force it while routes away. And they've started it up. Yeah. And it doesn't um, look like they know. So if you look at the gold, route has 8,000 gold, so really minus that 8,000. Oh! Firefly going and taking the Baron! My goodness! Fight is out! It's Firefly gets taken out, but Route reconnects, and he has Baron Fire uh, Ion also gets taken out, and now Enrique is in a bad spot, but Faith is going to live just barely, and now you have two remaining members on your team with Baron. One of them may or may not be in the game right now. Um, no, he's not. <laughs> Anyways, back to the point. Of, well, that Baron getting taken away is so good for, uh, well, it's not great but it's really good for George Mason. When you're down that 8,000 gold lead that you had, then it really starts to like be really bad for you. Um, even yeah. if you still have Baron. Getting and the Baron was really important because they probably could have just pushed an inhib with that with two dead, but 
the fact that they got the Baron was able to s stop a lot of it, but they still lost quite a bit. They basically lost half of their team. Yeah. Oh, route reconnected again. Maybe we'll see if he actually sticks around. <laughs> Anyways, I was making the point earlier. Uh, route has 8,000 of his team's gold. And right now, if you take out Route, because he's not in the game, if you take away that 8,000 gold lead, then right now you'd see that, uh, in reality, UTD is still ahead. Or UTD yeah. just pulled ahead. Because now they have that 2,000 gold over the enemy team. Uh, and now they also are really far ahead because they're still down a member. Firefly is looking for the pick onto Will win, and the taunt comes through out of two members from Joe Ion. And now Faith. So low, and he's gonna get taken up by Firefly. Call Connect is going to knock up Alex and Enrique, but it doesn't matter. It's a 4v1. Sorry, we'll win, but you're not gonna be able to do anything, and you're gonna get taken out on the Johns in the top lane. It seems like he's gonna be able to take this tier 1 top tower very easily. Uh, the minions are there, the TBS is there. Gets taken down. I don't think he's really going to get much more than this one tower, though. And it looks like Enrique is going to be pushing bot lane. Potentially get this. Uh, tier 2 tower. And they have Baron with Alex there, so I think they're going to be able to take it pretty easily. And right now, only Keen is backing. Faith is going to be up in 3 seconds. They're not going to be able to take another tower, but having that, uh, having a little more pressure is really going to be very useful. Yeah, and I'm surprised at how well with just 4 players they're able to actually go around the map and make sure that uh, not too much gold is being given away while they're on the uh, back foot. And it looks like they're going to get this Mountain Drake here. Yeah, this is really impressive. They- Oh! Route's actually moving! Hey! Back, and they take the dragon. This is actually pretty big, because UTD doesn't know that Route is back. He's going to be coming in the backside, and he's going to be potentially Although, getting a lot of damage back. They, so they should know oh, now. He walked himself. past yeah. minions, yeah. <laughs> So it is finally a 5v5 again, and that 8,000 gold, uh, Route, come on, I'm trying to give you credit for joining the game again. 4v5 situation once again, that gold lead doesn't matter, the pressure that UTD are able to exert over George Mason is still going to be so impressively bad uh, for George Mason. So now, UTD just takes the tower, because they're able to. Although George Mason still has the ability to win the game, as long as they are able to uh, at least trade turret for turret uh, with them, with Dallas, and then uh, they can also get a lot of picks with Shen and everyone. Yeah. Honestly, big credit to George Mason for simply for the fact they haven't lost yet. It's a 4v5 situation. Everything that could be going wrong, really is going wrong. Like, the worst thing that could happen, when you're uh, so far ahead, one of your members leaves you, and now you're in a terrible spot where, really, the enemy team's always gonna have more pressure than you, uh, unless you kill one of them. But even then, if you're gonna kill one of them, then they're still gonna be able to just split push and play around you so well. Although the issue is, is Dallas doesn't have, like, one person that they can throw onto a side lane that can just automatically win. Mm -hmm. Shen will just 1v1 anything, so as long as uh, George Mason can not get caught while they keep Shen on the side lane, they should be fine. And th they won't lose gold, but it'll be hard for them to increase their gold lead. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, it's such a tough game uh, for George Mason now. Uh, and really, it's, it seems like it might be a tough series if Brown is gonna reconnect. It's not looking too bright. So hopefully Although, Route can fix his router. You got all, <laughs> all four members of George Mason coming up to the top lane. They're gonna be able to take this. How do they Camille's have more from pressure behind. than UTD? Yeah, Camille is coming from behind, as well as the Rise. He has ultimate available. He's going to be able to cut them off. But right now, George Mason are running away effectively. And now the ultimate is coming through from X-Case. Brings only X-Case. And now, Firefly has the damage. Deletes! Faith! And now the team fight is breaking out. 4v4 situation. And now Will win. Rooted it up. Walks forward. Ion getting another kill. 
And now, big stun for Firefly! The Johns force to heal, running away, Firefly gets onto him! Sandy Knight comes through, Firefly takes him out before he gets taken out himself! And now, going in is Will Win. Ion has so much health, that's a double kill for X Case. Now it's a 1v1 between X Case and Ion. This is bad. He takes the blast plan and he's out of there! Four members of uh, T er, of Dallas down. How does that even happen? It's a 5v4! Although, the, <laughs> the Johns wasn't there. I think there's a communication error on them following up with that. It took him quite a while to catch up with the team. He was he pretty much got there as soon as uh, the, a member had already died and others were already like chunked to half. So it was pretty much a four v four, and you do not want a four v four this team. Yeah, on especially George Mason. the top laner and the jungler both have eight kills. Yeah, and Shen just isn't dying in these team fights. He's just so tanky. And once again, you can see Route just hopelessly waiting in the fountain. One day. <laughs> and it looks like uh, Orn's out of minion dematerializers, so you can't use them on the banner like he's been using them before. So yeah, Shen will, will be able up. to keep the uh, side lane pressure if he buffs oh, up a mission. Oh no, but now Ion getting caught out. Firefly going deep, getting the stun onto X case. Now the uh, Call of Forge God coming in big, Faith laying down big damage, but ends up getting taken out of himself, and Enrique laying down the traps, the damage is there, Firefly so low, dives in, getting a kill, in the cleanup, and now everybody's dying, double kill, X case, or shutting down Firefly, and now Will win, running away, Enrique with the auto attack ace in the hole coming through, Ion getting the taunt, not getting the taunt, but getting the kill, and now, what is happening? You have a 3v1 situation, when one of your members is AFK, UT Dallas, what are you doing? It's just, you <laughs> can't really do anything in these team fights. She's just so far behind. She's yeah. been Flame Horizon for a little while now. And this is certainly Baron going over. I doubt Kaisa can really do anything about it. And looks like she's yeah. not even going to try. Yeah, uh, it really says a lot about the lead that Firefly and Ion were able to develop, where even when one of their teammates literally disconnected from the game, they're still able to single-handedly keep the game going by themselves. You gotta yeah, give them mad credit for that. They're so far ahead that it's effectively as if they were three champions between the two of them, if not more. Yeah, uh, and... Another dragon, Infernal Dragon, is going to be spawning. And goodness gracious, man. You and have George Orn's Mason teleporting in. It. They smite it, and they get it for free. And now, Call of the Forge God is going to be coming through. Gets three-man knockup, and the ultimate does come through from X-Case. This is your fight. Come on, win this. Damage is there. Uh, Will Win is very far in. X-Case getting stunned up, but deading the blast plants out. John's in the wrong side of the fight. Hexical Minion comes through and Enrique gets kill onto the Johns. And now Firefly gets kill on to Faith. And now four members now. Triple kill. Quadra kill for Enrique. And that's going to be the ace. George Mason with the Death March are going to be running it down into mid to clean up UT Dallas's towers. They have Baron. They have everything they need to finish out this game. Ladies and gentlemen, George Mason are going to be taking game three with only four members. Oh my god. Yeah, it's quite a feat to win it with four members. Luckily, uh, Firefly and Ion were just so far ahead that they could just brute force any team fight that oh. it didn't matter what the Kaisa and Camille were doing. Good.